Hi, welcome back to another episode of Honey and Milk Podcast. If you've been here before, welcome. If this is your first time, get comfortable, get seated, and feel free to look around, not only at this video, but then the other videos as well. Uh, so we'll just head straight into it today. So um, if you were following me last week, then you know that we started the Names of the Lord, or rather Names of God series. So today is part two. Today is going to be part two, and we're going to start dive straight into the names of God. <laughs> so the today's episode, we're going to be talking about the name of God as Adonai, Ado Adonai. I think there's another spelling for it. Or, sorry, I mean another pronunciation of it, but it doesn't come to mind right now. But um, yeah, so the spelling is A D O N A I, Adonai. And what does Adonai mean? Adonai means Lord, Master, or Owner. And it's so interesting because Adonai is first said, or rather first noted in the Bible in Genesis 15 verse 1. And it is also the first, the first name man gives to God. And I mean like um, in a conversation. So there are other per Prior to that, there are other names that have been birthed concerning God. Um, but when it comes to God having a conversation with man, um, most of the conversations were just directed as at God, as you, you know. But then the first title given by man in a conversation with God um, that has a title i don't know how, i don't know how to describe it it's like okay so like the other conversations that man has been having with god so far was like okay you gave me the the woman you gave me um gave me the fruit to eat of you know and came in and abel was like oh am i my brother's keeper so there wasn't any title in those conversations not that there were not titles in between that like in between genesis 1 to genesis 15 because abraham also declared that god was el elion but that was in proclamation to another person not to god but in a conversation between man and god the first title given in such a conversation was adonai was lord that was what abraham called god he called him adonai referred to him as adonai and like I said before, Adonai means Lord, Master, Owner. Um, even in the New Testament, Jesus is called Lord. So the name, the Greek word of that is Kurios. It's called Lord. What I saw was like 700 times. No, it's not me. I'm stating from a website. I just sit down and count everything. But it is said that um, Jesus himself was referred to as Lord almost as 700 times in the New Testament by his disciples, you know. So um, Mary, uh, Paul, um, Peter, John, they would refer to, uh, outside of rabbi, they would also refer to Jesus as Lord. So what is a Lord? Obviously, like master, owner, you start to understand what those titles or rather what it means and what it portrays in terms of the name of God so like as we spoke about last week each name of God carries a dimension of God that or characteristics or a character of God that is embodied in his name right so Adonai means Lord Master Owner and a master you start to understand that okay is a master servant relationship thing owner means like the person is has the right of full ownership of possession like uh, when someone says, oh, copyrights, you've taken ownership of my rights or something like that. That means someone is trying to claim possession of what is rightfully owned by someone else. Um, and then Lord, Lord is still to do, Lord is more to do with authority and head, um, headship, rulership. So in terms, and it's commonly known in the, in British settings, so he has been deemed a Lord. And what does that mean? I think um, Lords tend to rule over a house. So there is a house that they have rulership over, they have control over, that they have government, um, governance over basically. So when we refer to God as Adonai, 
when we refer to him as Lord, what does that? Uh, it, it means that we are in acknowledgement of God's total possession of us, of our bodies. So in in if I, I can't remember exactly where it was, but it says that we have been redeemed, um, and we are a people for His own possession. I think that was in Timothy. Yeah. I'm not sure. I really should be writing these things down. <laughs> um, that, but we have been redeemed and we are a people for his own possession. And we have been, even in Romans, when um, I don't know exactly where in Romans, where he says we have been freed in order, we have been freed from being slaves to sin and death. And now we have been freed to choose obedience and righteousness, which leads to eternal life. So we are. I would say we are servitude beings. So that means we will serve something. If you decide not to serve God, if you decide not to um, take God as your Lord and master, that means you will be subjected. You will serve something else. And you think that you are not serving something else, but you are serving something else. So if you say, okay, I'm not going to um, obey God, but I'm independent. Or you want to say that there is no God, Maybe you say that there is no God and thus you cannot serve something that does not exist according um yeah, according to you. Then you're going to serve something else. You're either going to serve yourself, you're going to serve self, you're going to serve money, you're going to serve the world, you're going to serve sin, you're going to serve something else. If if everyone takes an inventory of their lives and what governs them and what commandment uh, like and what directions they use and guidance that they use for their life, you will find out that if you are not serving God, you are serving something else. Um, so we when whenever we claim God as Lord, whenever we claim Jesus as Adonai as uh, uh, the Lord over all, because Adon is actually Lord, but Nai is like the supremacy of god's lordship so it's like say lord of all right so when we claim that when we proclaim god as adonai when we say okay jesus you are my lord and the interesting thing is that when it comes to salvation what we're meant to proclaim from our mouths is jesus is lord and what we're meant to believe in our hearts is that he died and he was he died and was um, resurrected and he rose up again so if the first thing in order for you to come into salvation is to declare that he is Lord, that means it's to declare that he has full ownership and right and permission to your life. So if, some, if something else tries to creep in to take you, that person is in violation of God's ownership. And God has every authority to cast judgment on that on that spirit, on that being, on whatever it is that is trying to take what is his own possession. So now we're even coming a little bit into the, the, the I'll call it the pros, the benefits, <laughs> benefits of um, acknowledging and claiming God as your Lord. So as his servants, he gives us direction. So um, how the, even though the psalmist says, and I shall, I will, I will dwell in the house of, the Lord forever. Even though the word Lord there is actually Jehovah or Yehovah or Yod Hey Wah Hey, that one is a different um it's a different <coughs> um disclaimer, or rather it's a different name. But disclaimer because Yod Hey Wah Hey was very revered as holy, some people did not want to pronounce it. Yod Hey Wah Hey. Um, um, apologies to anyone that I am making uncomfortable. But yes, that was it. So um, because there was, it was a very reverenced name, they would prefer to speak it out as Adonai or Jehovah. So that is why, um, although the Bible, if you're reading your Bible, you see a lot of, oh, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, angel of the Lord and all that. Um, it is not always referred to as Adonai. Disclaimer. Yes, so in the psalm there, even though the... The Hebrew word is not Adonai. The psalmist just said that I will dwell in the house of um, the Lord forever. That means he would dwell in the protection and the provision of his faithful 
Lord, his faithful master. He was dependent on what his master would give to him. He was dependent on he was dependent on the generosity and the faithfulness of God as his Lord, and also in the direction of the Lord. So he would direct the Lord directs our path. The Lord, um, I, f- I can't. Qu- the verse is coming to my mind, but I think it's a man, man plans a step, but it's the Lord that directs them, or man proposes, God disposes. I think that's it. So when we acknowledge God as Lord, he also has every right to direct us. He has every right to guide us. He has every right to send us to where he wants us to go. So if he's telling you, okay, um, I don't want you to move. Even though you, you want to move. Maybe you want to travel out, take a holiday. The Lord, um, God as Lord over your life, has every right to come and tell you, no, don't travel. Don't travel this period. I want you to stay here and I want you to do this. It is when you acknowledge and you submit yourself to him as his servant, as him having the right to fully own you and own and direct you that is when you would actually obey so obedience actually (laughs) obedience is the result of your full acknowledgement as god as lord obedience is the result or rather is the reaction of your full acknowledgement as god as lord as adonai And even in um, the New Testament, Apostle Paul and the apostles, they would describe themselves as bond servants of God, you know, called as an apostle, bond servant of the Lord. So they also um, fully understood the, the acknowledgement of God as Lord in their life, right? And another place to kind of show as, I would like to say confirmation or as to seal what I'm saying is Matthew 7 um, 21 to 23 it says not everyone who says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven only those who do what my father in heaven wants I'm reading it for my for my phone um, Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven only those who do what my father in heaven wants on that day many will say to me Lord Lord didn't we prophesy in your name Didn't we expel demons in your name? Didn't we perform miracles in your name? Then I would tell them to their faces, I never knew you. Get away from me, you you workers of lawlessness. So that means that... Sorry, I had to go for a bit. So, um, yeah, Matthew 7, 21 to 23. It says, get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. They were not acknowledged uh, rather they were not acknowledged even though they quote unquote did did things with the power of god that doesn't mean they did it with the direction or the law of god that means they were not subject to his rulership and his guidance so it's not everything we do as christians that is god ordained we also have to take time with everything that we do although yes he gives us his gift doesn't mean that we can use it whenever, however we want. It is still his gift. It is still his rulership. It is still his guidance. Right. So that's it for today. (laughs) So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege that we have to call you Adonai, the privilege we have to call you Lord and Master, the privilege to dwell in your house for all the days of our lives, the privilege it takes to serve under you, to be guided by you, to rely on your faithfulness, to rely on your generosity, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we ask that in every moment of our lives, you allow us to be still and hear your guidance, to be still and obey your word, to be still and obey and look unto you as our protector, as our provider, as our Lord, as the one that we will run to in case we need anything, oh God. Heavenly Father, I pray that anyone that is still discovering how to come into alignment with your rulership and your lordship, oh Lord, that you will help them to fully acknowledge and understand and obey, obey you to the very letter in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, 
you know the drill <laughs> like share comment subscribe to the video um yeah find me on instagram and twitter at honey milk pdcst that's podcast without the vowels uh write me an email at hi.b at hi.b at honey and milk.org and yeah see you next week bye